Hello everybody. So the next experiment is FM modulation, which we are going to do using IC triple five. Let's look at the diagram. To understand the working of the circuit, it's important to understand the internal diagram of the IC triple five five. As you know, IC triple five five consists of three resistors on as shown in this particular diagram. It's between pin number eight and the ground, which is at pin number one. Each of these resistors are of five kilo ohms. So each of these are of five kilo ohms. So what happens is that the voltage that is experienced at this point, at this point is totally different. Here, the voltage is going to be two times VCC by three. And here the voltage is going to be just VCC by three. So how does the circuit work? It works with the help of this capacitor and these two resistances. The capacitor is charged and discharged, which creates an output here, which is of the pulsed form. Now the charging path of the capacitor is through this resistor R1 and passing through the diode the capacitor gets charged up and the discharging path of the capacitor is through R2 all the way to 7 as you can see here from 7 the current will go directly to the ground. So the capacitor gets regularly charged and discharged through these paths. In this circuit arrangement, whenever the, whenever the capacitor is charged to a value which is two times VCC by three, two times VCC by three, the capacitor when it gets charged to that value, then the threshold is basically met and the output of this comparator will basically make the output of this flip-flop go opposite of what the condition is. And whenever the capacitor has discharged to a value close to VCC by 3, then this particular comparator comes to operation and it is again set. So the resetting and setting of this particular flip-flop is what gives us the output. So the charging of the capacitor will start at VCC by 3 level, slowly it goes up and once it reaches VCC by 3, 2 times, 2 times VCC by 3, then a discharge is triggered because this particular compactor starts working and the threshold has just crossed that so as soon as the threshold is crossed, the flip-flop comes into operation and the discharge is triggered. So again, it goes to discharge. And again, it starts its charging. So charging and discharging is what is happening in this particular circuit. Now, as shown here, the capacitor gets charged up to 2 by 3 VCC and get discharged up to VCC by 3. Now, as it is shown in this particular diagram here, at pin number 5, we can give a voltage which can vary the voltage at this particular compactor input. So, right now it is 2 by 3 VCC, but we can increase its value. When we increase its value, what happens is that the charging time increases. It charges to a higher level. So, generally, if there is nothing like this, then the pulse would, width would be for on time this much, for off time this much. But once we charge it to a higher voltage, the pulse width increases. And that is what we do in this particular experiment. Now have a look at this particular waveform diagram. As you can see here, the message signal that is given to the pin number 5 through a coupling capacitor creates a different voltage at this particular comparator level because of which, as I said previously, the charging time increases 
and thus the width of the pulse keeps on changing according to the message signal because the voltage at this comparator has <coughs> got changed. Now to keep the pulse to have a duty cycle loss of 50 percentage, we select the value of R1 and R2 to be same. So we have R1 and R2 to be equal. Let's take it as R. And this diode is present there so that the charging has only R1 resistance and the discharging has only R2 resistance coming into play. And since both of them are saying same, the charging and the discharging of the capacitor will take at the same place, at the same uh, pace. So the on time and the off time are both going to be same. But when the signal is at pin number 5, at a different voltage, the width of the charge time increases and because of which we have got this particular FM signal at the output where according to the input the width of the pulse has got changed. This is how we do the FM modulation. So what is the frequency that we can get from this circuit is first we have to understand when no signal is going to be applied here then the frequency that we want to operate here is going to depend on the total time period and since R1 and R2 are same here which is taken as R we can find out the volt the frequency that we want to uh, that we can have when we use a particular value of resistance and capacitor since we are going to use the value of capacitance here as 0 0.01 microfarad it's okay to say that we can use different values of resistor based on the frequency that we desire to have. For this experiment we desire to have a frequency of the square wave to be 10 kilohertz and the variation should be across 10 kilohertz. So by taking the value of F as 10 kilohertz and the value of C as 0.1 microfarad we can find out the value of R that can be given for R1 and R2 so that we obtain a output square wave of 10 kilohertz and then we will give an input signal which varies with a peak to peak voltage of let's say 2 to 2, 2 to 3 volts or even more but not more than the applied voltage here so that we are able to get an FM signal in which we observe the variation. So at the output what you will be seeing at the FM output that has to be drawn in the graph. We have to calculate what is the pulse width at different different times in the DSO and plot it accordingly. Talking about this capacitor, this is a coupling capacitor which is used to basically avoid the DC signal coming from the input part. For our case or our experiment, we will use a capacitor of let's say 0 0.01 microfarad or even less than that. So that's how we will achieve the FM modulation. Thank you.